It's taken a few years, but we've finally gotten some clarification of perhaps the most messed up moment in the Star Wars prequel trilogy. The moment in question comes in Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, when it appears that young Boba Fett is grieving over the death of his father, Jango, while seemingly holding his severed head. Actor Daniel Logan, who portrayed Boba in the film, recently took to Twitter to state that this was not exactly as it seemed. You may remember that near the film's end, Anakin and Padme are captured by Jango as they're attempting to reach Obi-Wan Kenobi. Luckily, a group of Jedi arrive to rescue them, including Yoda and Mace Windu, who takes on Jango. The Master Jedi proves to be too formidable for the bounty hunter, who is quickly decapitated by Windu. As the fighting continues, a brief shot shows young Boba apparently picking up the helmet containing his father's severed head, looking appropriately traumatized. The beheading and Boba's reaction stands as one of the most disturbing happenings in Star Wars history. Sure, Jango is a ruthless mercenary and Boba is a clone, but the sight of a kid clutching his parental figure's decapitated head seems just a little bit intense for the series. However, according to Logan, when Boba picks up that helmet, dear old dad's head is not actually in it. You can see the shadow of Jango's head falling out just after Mace removes it from his body and the helmet goes flying. So no, no head in it when Boba Fett picks up the helmet. Thanks, Samuel L. Jackson. We're not sure why Logan would deign to offer thanks to the dude who lightsabered his dad's head off. At any rate, it's telling that despite the answer to the question being right there in the film, the shadowy image of Jango's falling head slipped by so many fans that Logan had to set the record straight. Perhaps even in shadow, the image was just too gruesome for director George Lucas to linger on for too terribly long. Unlikely, but seems to be true. Of course, it's not like the Star Wars movies don't have their share of dark moments. Even the original trilogy hit us with scenes like the aftermath of the Stormtrooper raid on the home of Luke's aunt and uncle in Episode 4 A New Hope. If that's not enough for you, there's always Darth Vader performing an impromptu amputation of Luke's hand in Episode 5 The Empire Strikes Back. For the really bloodthirsty, there's also Luke's merciless torture at the hands of Palpatine while screaming for his help at the conclusion of Episode 6 Return of the Jedi. Still, don't forget that Disney has stewardship of the entire Star Wars series, having purchased Lucasfilm in 2012. A bloodless on-screen decapitation is one thing, a small child holding his father's head is quite another. What we're saying is that if it weren't made clear within the film that the helmet was empty when Boba picks it up, Disney may have had to go back to do a little Lucas-style revision to make it so. Of course, when you think about it, this raises another question. For the remainder of the battle, where exactly was Jango's head? Was it just kind of sitting there on the ground? And if so, was it somewhere that young Boba could see it? Upon further reflection, we're thinking that Jango's head probably was hanging around for the rest of the battle, which means that Logan's explanation actually serves to make the tragic scene even worse. Well, nobody ever said that being the clone son of a Mandalorian mercenary in a galaxy far, far away was easy. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.